Welcome into to Where the 99 Lead. It's a presentation of the University of Pikeville where we talk about all things dealing with the University of Pikeville from athletics to academics and to the Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine. I'm Andrew Joyce, joined today by Dr. Randy Littman of the Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine. Dr. Littman, welcome in. Thank you, Andrew. Where the 99 lead. You know those 99 steps. Yes, I do. I walk them at least once a week, and I feel stunted now that that building's in my way. It's been tough on a lot of folks' workouts going to and from campus. Those 99 steps lead to campus. This program, we talk about those 99 steps leading from campus, from the University of Pikeville back into the communities. And we all only hope that those steps will be reopened very soon because they're an important part of our community. The Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine, we want to get into that. There's a nice building going up on campus. I know it's near and dear to you. We want to talk about some of the programs that are available, but every opportunity to talk about the Osteopathic Medicine School at the university, we first want to educate some people what osteopathic medicine is because I talk to so many people. What is osteopathic medicine? What are the differences? So who better than, to ask than Dr. Randy Lippman? Let's go there first. All right, it's a, it's a system approach to the care of patients. It's very personal. We use our hands to diagnose. Our hands detect moisture in the skin, heat in the skin, pulses, toughness of tissues, all of those tell us about stresses and strains on the body. Locations of where those stresses and strains are felt tell us what organs are involved. Mm -hmm. Osteopathic physicians utilize the same tools as any physician, whether they are a doctor of medicine or a doctor of osteopathic medicine. But we take it another element. We look at these regions. We look at these tissue texture changes and utilize that to develop a patient-centered approach to partner with them to treat their issue. So actually hands-on in diagnosis rather than just question and answer. That is correct. Very interesting. And of course, we talk about osteopathic medicine. How long has that been a part of the University of Pikeville now? It was originally uh, thought of since 1995, and the first class matriculated in August of 1997. Wow, it's hard to believe it's been around 15 years, I guess. Now. Yes, that's correct. So uh, Dr. Littman, uh, of course, we wanna talk about the programs, some of the mi many different programs that are available. We wanna talk about the new building program as well. But first, let's talk about you. Dr. Randy Littman, you come to Pikeville directly from Philadelphia. That's correct. And when did you come to Pikeville? I actually came three times. The okay. first time was in 1974, and I actually got lost. And wow. I found out when I pulled into a Texaco station next to where Jerry's is that I was in Pikeville, Kentucky. Yes. There were some steel bridges going across yes. bodies of water, yes. which have now been moved. Yes. The second time I came, I was helping a doctor deliver babies. Okay. And that's when I decided I wanted to come back. Really? And that was in 1995. Aha. Uh -huh. And then in 2004, I made my decision to go full-time, and I moved to Pikeville, Kentucky. And you were involved with medical education in Philadelphia That's as well. How long have you been involved in that field? I've been in medical education since 1992. Wow. And that taking place in Philadelphia prior to you coming to Pikeville? That's correct. Where did you work there? Where, where were you involved? At the in Philadelphia education? College of Osteopathic Medicine. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, of course, you, you've been involved with that. Philadelphia's Osteopathic Medicine School. Yes. Been around a little longer than Pikeville's. Yes, it actually uh, is 1892, three, in that, in, in that era. It was one of the first of the five uh, osteopathic medical schools, the first of which was in Kirksville, Missouri. I know the University of Pikeville program, the Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine now called, uh, it hasn't been around that long, 15 years now uh, that we've seen that, but it ranks very highly with other osteopathic medicine schools across the country. Why is that? It's our approach to reaching our students. We supply our students with all of the necessities to be successful in education. We give them a computer. We give them an iPad too. We buy their textbooks. It's 
all part of their tuition. We bring a student and, and have them achieve their potential with the tools that they minimally need to be successful. Mm -hmm. No other school does that. We are the fourth from the top of the most affordable tuition in the country for a private medical school. Wow. We make education available for the individual that has potential. We have a mission to serve Eastern Kentucky, Central Appalachia, right. and communities like it. And that's where a majority of the graduates have landed in the 15 years of this program. Historically, 60% or greater of our class are Eastern Kentucky and or, and or Kentucky natives. Have we met the need for rural medical care with this school? Has it been met yet? Are we close? Is it somewhere in the near future to just meeting the need, not exceeding, but just meeting? 44% of our graduates since our first class graduated in 2001 have entered the primary care disciplines. Right. So we are meeting our need. Very good. Continuing to have doctors leave the university or the Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine and arriving in those areas, it only should be better for folks that live within those regions. Yes, because we have an adage, we want to take people from their homes, educate them, put them back in their homes, mm -hmm. and let them get educated there with preceptors from their region, such that when they're finished all of their training, they are aware of the problems associated with their regions and are best equipped to, to, to deal with them. Talking with Dr. Randy Lippman with the Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine, and um, it's been a great program for our community, for our region, and we've seen a lot of uh, new doctors' faces around our community since the arrival of this school. Now, changing the face of our community, a new building going up, the coal building, and we've all watched the construction of this building. I understand that uh, it was scheduled to open July 2012, this year. That is correct. Still on track? That We are still on track. Let's talk about that building. What will be housed there? I know the Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine that will be its primary home at, at that point. But let's talk about some other things that will be housed there and how, it, how that building will be used by the College of Osteopathic Medicine. Well, first of all, University of Pikeville, Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine looks at themselves as a stakeholder in healthy Kentucky. Sure. To do that, we need to train our students with the latest equipment in hands-on osteopathic manipulative medicine clinical skills, as well as communication skills to reach any region of the professional globe. Sure. This building will have equipment that will have robotics for practicing clinical uh, education in the first years. We will have standardized patient laboratories for students to meet with individuals specially trained in different medical issues mm -hmm. to allow the student to develop their patient physician communication skills their hand on hands on clinical skills and at the same time have the equipment for students to be able via computer to look at related topics associated with the disease processes they see the medical school will house a state of the art anatomy laboratory a state-of-the-art osteopathic manipulative medicine laboratory. It will have the standardized patient rooms, administrative offices, lecture halls and classrooms. We will have a new cafeteria that will serve the entire campus. Right. And something very near and dear to me will be our outpatient OMT clinic, which will be, be moved from Armington Learning Center, which is where it has been since 2005, right. to our new coal building. Glad you brought up the OMT clinic because I want to talk about that today, mm -hmm. just not quite yet. The new building still scheduled to be open July 2012. The School of Osteopathic Medicine has operated on campus in limited space for all of these years. 
How much will this change things for students on campus? It will allow for students to have pretty much all of their education in one building, whereas they've run to as many as three buildings over the course of their four-year education to get their primary sciences. Uh, all of the clinical skills will be done in that building. All the library uh, skills will still be in the telemedicine building down the hill, sure. but we'll have communications with them. Uh, admissions will be done, and all interviews for admissions will be done in the new building. And the building will serve as a hub for healthcare professionals from the outside to come in and share their expertise with our students. Also, with the addition of the new building, more space, does that allow for more students? We were approved to in increase the size of our class by uh, approximately uh, 40 percent, we will go from a class of 75 to a class of 135. So that is really uh, very, very impressive. We will be able to train more physicians with the modern equipment, train them more efficiently. With the expanded faculty, it will mean for the community uh, a larger population to frequent restaurants, rent property purchase property and become responsible citizens of the city of Pikeville I'm thinking, and Pike County. I'm thinking a little more selfishly. Okay. As I get a little older, it <laughs> means better medical care. Yes, it does. More doctors in the area, in the region, and coming out of the College of Osteopathic Medicine means be better medical care for, for all of us throughout the region. That, that is correct. We have a first-class hospital in this region. Sure. We have, I should say, first-class hospitals as, as we move further sure. from the area. We will now have quality physicians that we're training here in our community to now populate those hospitals. And a lot of those, those uh, graduates, those doctors, those new doctors, they are staying here. Yes. Uh, Dr. Littman, we wanted to talk about the OMT clinic. It's something you mentioned, yes. and uh, it was something that was high on my list of topics I wanted to talk about. I've heard of it. I don't know what it does. Let's find out. All right. Well, it was first uh, originated as a concept uh, by my uh, predecessor, Dr. Edward Stiles. Dr. Stiles looked at taking our students and acquainting them with what is involved in the examination and management of musculoskeletal issues. Mm -hmm. And he limited his students to train and practice with the faculty and students of Pikeville College. When I came to the school, I said, let's expand. Our mission is to bring medicine to the mountains. Right. With that being in mind, uh, I had the blessing of our founding dean to open it to the communities. The Osteopathic Manipulative Treatment Clinic opens any, to any member of Pike County or anywhere and beyond to come and be evaluated for musculoskeletal diseases. We, as I said, are health partners in Healthy Kentucky. And what that means is we have to be cognizant of the major medical issues in our state. Blood pressure, sugar, heart disease, lung disease, obesity. Our students come in, they see individuals that have these issues. Our clinic, which though is dedicated to treating musculoskeletal conditions, re will, will serve as a referral base to physicians in the region right. to report elevated blood pressure. Mm -hmm. When necessary, if we see uh, circulatory disease, blood vessel disease, report it to the doctors. We've picked up coronary artery disease. We've picked up hypertension, sure. high blood pressure. So. Not only are we treating musculoskeletal conditions, we are also observing blood pressure for the doctors, mm -hmm. observing sugar for the doctors, finding new cases. We're serving as almost a diagnostic facility, right. even though our intention is just to treat for musculoskeletal conditions. And this, this clinic now open to it's anyone? To, it's to anyone. It's two days a week, eight hours a day. Uh, anyone can come in. We, we take walk-ins. We have appointments. 
And the issue is, in this case, we are working partners with the working doctors here, right. some of the many doctors that teach our students mm -hmm. as preceptors send their patients to our clinic mm -hmm. because they know our students are going to watch out for their patients and have a continuum of care. And it gives the students an opportunity to interact with a patient. It is it's a training bed for those for those the medical students. It's a full-time training center. Our first and second year students are actually assigned to come in and observe and take part. We have assigned fourth year students that come and work with a class of research fellows that spend a year of their time to learn more about osteopathic manipulative medicine. And it, it's really a continuum between the care that exists, the care that's yet to come, and the individuals that need the knowledge mm -hmm. and the patients that may need some treatment and they're part of the care yes that's right and what kind of problems would one experience would be welcomed at the clinic that could be they could be treated there I had a man just on Friday who complained to a friend for over five years that it was hard for him to walk from his car to church because his foot hurt as we all know, there's not many level sidewalks in, in eastern Kentucky. Right. And one of the most common things that happen when we walk on uneven ground is for a small bone in our leg, lower leg, to shift and touch a nerve. Uh -huh. That caused his pain. Literally, it's one of those remarkable cases where just moving that bone away from the nerve took his pain away. And that was accomplished in the clinic? In the clinic. Uh, one of many cases, we have individuals that get into wrecks. We have individuals that have had heart disease and developed frozen shoulders from angina. Right. We've had individuals with long-time lung disease that develop tight muscles around the ribs, and mm. we have to help them with those muscles so breathing is more efficient. Anybody is welcome, any issue. One thing about osteopathic medicine, it's both diagnostic as well as what we call therapeutic, sure. something treatable. Sure, and treating the whole body. That's correct. Osteopathic medicine, OMT clinic. What does OMT stand for? It stands, the O stands for osteopathic, okay. the M stands for manipulative, mm -hmm. and the T stands for treatment. Okay. We're going to send some folks your way. I appreciate that. The OMT clinic, two days a week. What days of the week are, is the Wednesday clinic? from from 9 a.m., closes at 5. Mm -hmm. Friday, 9 a.m., closes at 5. And it's located where? It's located presently at yes. the Armington Learning Center, room 458, which is on the fourth floor of the Learning Center. I'm talking with Dr. Randy Lipman with the University of Pikeville, Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine. It's a long title. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Lipman, of course, the Associate Dean for Clinical Sciences, Associate Professor of Osteopathic Principles and Practice and Chair of the Department of Osteopathic Principles and Practice. Dr. Lippman, of course, we talk about the OMT Clinic, the Osteopathic Medical School, and we've talked a little about the differences between MDs and DOs as we finally become to know the students of the Osteopathic Medic Medical School. They're called DOs, and some of the Cooler ones are <laughs> called DOs on the go. <laughs> and that's a cool little program you've got going. Um, it's a student-led organization, I know. Yes. And I've seen these guys out in the community and ladies, and uh, I've heard some things about what they do, but I want you to tell us in detail. The DOs on the go is, is a program that is supported by our Student Osteopathic Medical Association. And it's a program that takes our students out into the field we go to places like, for example, we've been to Habitats of Humanity. We've been to the March of Dimes that is usually takes place in September, the Cancer Walk in May. Right. And what we do with those, uh, those sites, besides uh, screening for musculoskeletal, we screen for sugar, mm -hmm. we screen for blood pressure, we screen for lung disease, eyes and visual acuity, we refer to uh, he health professionals in the eye professions. We look for skin and refer to skin professionals when necessary. The idea is we serve as the extension to the practices. We get the patients to the doctors afterwards. It 
enables our students to see firsthand the eager individuals in, in our society, the problems in our society. We talk about the cases and what's involved and what the patients should expect. And the student engages in conversations with the patient to realize that, that the patient, when spoken directly to, is a partner in their own care. Sure. And that is our motto, to include the patient as a partner. Also, I would imagine that it would act as an educational tool. Yes. For the community. They learn who DOs are, yes. what DOs are, and the differences between them and MDs, yes. which is very small, just the way it's treated and diagnosed. We understand that. But it also is a way to present the, co the College of Osteopathic Medicine to the community. And I would imagine probably have even encountered some patients that might have never seen a doctor had it, they not been out in the field. Well, uh, it's interesting you say that. We have patients uh, once a year. National College invites us to do a DOs on the go at their summer health fair. Yes. We've met several individuals that went to that fair, saw what the DOs do, and chose to now register as patients in the clinic and come fairly regularly to be seen and evaluated in the clinic. Of course, those are patients that have problems. Yes. These, they have health issues. They have health issues. They have doctors, it. and we do not take them away from their doctors. They stay with their own doctors. We add another dimension to sure. their care. Absolutely. And also the students. Yes. In the osteopathic medical school. They, uh, I had heard of a program that they actually had um, actors for lack of a better word, yes, as patients that they actually treated, diagnosed, and dealt with. Let's talk some about that program. We have a human model program. That's what it's we, called. And the human model program is for the first-year medical student. Mm -hmm. We believe that, that the best way to acquaint our students with the care of the human being is to get comfortable with the human being. So the, the first year is spent examining the patient under the clothes so they can become comfortable with the unclothed patient. Sure. We graduate from that into developing scenarios or encounters sure. which create common issues like what's going around now, the upper respiratory infection, the right. hacking coughs and whatnot. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> And we present various encounters like that, yes. and the students look at the therapeutic approaches, both medicinally, behaviorally, and if indicated, manipulatively, right. to treat that. So it's, a, it's actually a two-year program within the school which prepares the student to go out in the field during the third year. Wow. Dr. Randy Lippman with the University of Pineville, Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine. We talk about the OMT clinic. We talk about DOs on the go. Uh, these students aren't just learning in the classroom. No, we're out there because the best way to learn about people is to learn from people. Exactly. Uh, I know a, another program that you've been very involved with, and those are the RAM events yes. in Pike County and, and around the Appalachian region, yes. not just in Pike County, but here in Pike County. Talk about that, how you became to be involved in that, and some of your experiences with, that, with RAM. Well, remote area medicine was really uh, the idea of others. Uh, I was approached by Dr. Bill Collins, a, a local dentist. He, of course, uh, was in contact with Judge Rutherford's office, who has been a big supporter of the RAM event sure. over, over the years. And the concept was to, was to bring eye care, dental care, and medical care to the medically underserved. A Tennessee-based uh, outfit, the Remote Area Medical, goes to areas that are medically unserved, mm -hmm. like in eastern Kentucky, right. like in, in uh, western Virginia, uh, we had one in Somerset in September. 
our RAM event is June of, of each year, and we've now had four RAM events here in Pike County, Kentucky, and we plan a fifth this June around Father's Day. And the response from the community has been overwhelming. 